Welcome to All About Money on HK, IBC, I'm Chloe Zen. With the development of financial technology, a number of robot advisors have launched their business in Hong Kong as the industry takes off in Asia. Also known as automated investment advisor, such robot advisors make use of algorithms and data-driven strategy to provide financial advice for portfolio construction or adjustments based on a client's personal circumstances. According to forecasts published by Statista, SS and their management in the robot devices market are expected to reach nearly 9 billion US dollars in the city this year as it attracts younger generations with its digital low-cost solutions. So just how reliable or safe are such services and can such an industry gain ground in the wealth management hub of Hong Kong? We're joined by Mr. Michele Ferrario, the founder of robot advisor firm Stash Away to discuss its mechanisms as well as the outlook. So welcome Michele. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. First thing first, how about uh, also let us know how did you get into this industry and found your company at Stash Away? So I had been in Asia for, for some time for my previous job, in particularly based in Singapore. And uh, I was lucky enough that I was accumulating some savings and I have a background in finance and therefore I knew what I wanted to do. I wanted to uh, in diversify my investments. I wanted to invest over time and I had a long-term time horizon. I wanna build you know, wealth for the long-term. I wanna build my retirement plan. I have three kids. I wanna make sure that you know, they have a base to start from when they get older. And, uh, and I went to the banks and, uh, and I was appalled by the type of conversations I was having. It was always a sales pitch rather than an advisory conversation. They were trying to sell me expensive products like unit trust with entry fees and very high management fees or insurance products with you know, 30 years lockup and crazy fees or structure notes with very unbalanced risk rewards profile. And so I, I thought there must be a better way uh, and then I realized that there was no one in the region uh, building, using technology to make investment simple and cost effective. And most importantly, to give access to intelligent investing. And so that's why in 2016, I kind of met my two co-founders. Uh, one is our CTO, one has been our chief investment officer for a long time. So an, a tech guy and an investment guy. And together we started what then uh, became Stash Away. Hmm. I know briefly uh, during the introduction, Period, we mentioned about how a uh, robot service or robot advisor works, but just tell us more about what exactly is a robot advisor and how exactly does it work? So there are kind of a two types of product that we currently offer uh, in Hong Kong. One is related to management of your cash. Mm. Uh, and the second one is related to the long-term investments you want to do. So what usually people refer to as robot advisors is the second part, the long-term investments. So the way it works is that Stash away makes it extremely simple to build what is called a diversified portfolio. What that means is that build a portfolio, invest in a portfolio of different asset classes. So you're gonna have some American equities, stocks in companies. You're gonna have some Asian equities. You're gonna have some, you know, some emerging markets, some developed markets. You're gonna have some technology equities or some consumer staple equities. And then you're gonna have maybe, a, depending on your risk level, a fixed income part, so some bonds, some mm. corporate bonds, some government bonds, maybe you're gonna have some gold, maybe you're gonna have some real estate. And the, uh, the system enables clients to do it very simply without being an expert in you know, the stock market or in the bond, you know, market. bond market, or you don't need to know, uh, you know the details. Uh, if you know a lot, you'll appreciate the sophistication of the platform. We have a lot of expert investors uh, in, on the platform, but if you don't know a lot, it's actually a great way to start and we help you do the right thing. What is the right thing? The right thing is invest over time. Ideally, you know, every time, every month you receive your salary and immediately you put away part of it toward your, you know, your goals, whatever that might be. Uh, so over time. And two is diversify, di diversifying. So not trying to bet on a single stock. You might get it right, you might get it wrong. If you get it right once, you're lucky, but how long are you gonna be lucky for? That's, that's a question mark that you need to ask yourself. And so, Enabling people very simply with very low cost to diversify and to invest over time is how you actually build wealth over the long term. Mm. I mean, the algorithm actually plays a, the core role at your service as well. How did you create such a you know algorithm? And for example, how does this maxim mechanism work in the case of ERA system, which is one of the core services that you're offering? Yeah. So in for our portfolios that I mentioned earlier, 
we have a set of choices. One of them is uh, the ERA, Economic Regime Driven Asset Allocation, ERAA uh, system that you mentioned. Uh, we also have a BlackRock managed portfolios that actually follow a BlackRock logic. And we also have flexible portfolios where clients can actually build their own asset allocation. But let's focus on the ERA ones as per your question for a second. So ERA uses macroeconomic data and market data, so inflation, growth, and market data, to make asset allocation decisions. Let me give you an example. Uh, over the last 18 months, we've seen inflation across the globe being you know, much higher than it has been for a very long time. And now we've seen interest rates uh, kind of uh, increase very, very much over the last 18 months. That changed the macroeconomic picture very significantly. And so you want your asset allocation to change with it. Mm. You know, in 2022, you wanted to have some inflation protection. Right now, you, uh, the fixed income part of your portfolio, you probably want, you know, in early 2023, you wanted to have it uh, focus on the short-term uh, part of the, of, the, of the fixed income market. So you want to have short-term debt, short-term bonds rather than long-term bonds. And so all of these mechanisms are embedded into the era logic. So looking at macroeconomic environment, making decisions of where to uh, place more or less of a portfolio's asset in order to benefit from the microeconomic cycle. To give you an example, in 2022, our portfolios have actually uh, beaten the respective uh, benchmarks, same risk benchmarks, by more than five percentage point on average across portfolios. And this year, year to date, in 2023, we are up more than one percent uh, across a benchmark, okay, again, across uh, uh, the 12 era portfolios that go from kind of low risk to high risk. So it's also about the client's long term and short term financial goals as well to adjust the portfolio as well. Uh, but also tell us what about the risks involved? For example, I know that your system has some risk shield or some sort of all weather strategy. What are those strategies? Yeah, so uh, at the end of the game, you cannot talk about returns without talking about risk. And sometimes people do the mistake of kind of a, you know, comparing things that are completely different. Uh, and that's why we put risk at the center of our investment logic, but also at the center of our communication. So we talk a lot about risk. When you open the app, you actually, the first thing you see is actually how much risk you're taking. You don't see how much returns you're making first, because that's very important to think about. Now, depending on your goal and your timeline and your personal preferences, you might want to take different level of risks. So two different people might have the ability to sleep at night or not with more or less volatility in their portfolios. And that should be taken into consideration as you build your portfolio. The same person <clears throat> might have two different goals. One is retiring in 30 years, mm. and the other one is I want to buy a house in three years. Those two goals, because they have such a different timeline, should have different level of risk. You can take more risk in the long term because you can wait. If there is volatility in the short term, you don't need to care. You can actually keep investing on a monthly basis and actually benefit from the fact that maybe the markets have been down for some time so that you can actually uh, increase uh, the value of your investment over the long time. While if you only have three years, you want to be more conservative. Mm. Because if there is a market crash exactly when you need the money, mm. then you, you know, you do, you're not going to be able to buy the house that you wanted to buy. And so you need to, take, you need to look at risk in conjunction with your personal goals. Right. And you need to monitor risk as part of your uh, overall asset allocation. And that's what Stashway makes it extremely easy. It sounds difficult. It is actually you know, uh, complex in many ways. Mm. But you know, the goal of Stashway is actually to make it simple and to make it intuitive. Uh, just jumping very quickly, how do you see about our current economic scenario compared with, for example, the 2008 financial crisis? So uh, right now, you know, we've been uh, uh, witnessing uh, one of the steepest increases in interest rate uh, in history. You know, went from 0% uh, in the US two years ago to now over 5%. Uh, the market expects potentially one more, one more hike. So it looks like the market expects that we're nearing uh, nearing the peak. There is a lot of volatility, both on the equity markets as well as on the bond markets, uh, especially in the last few weeks, actually, the bond markets have been extremely, extremely volatile. So what should an investor do? The short answer is continuing on your plan. So if you have, again, the ability to think long term, because you are actually building your wealth over the long term, you shouldn't be distracted by what happens this week, next week, or the week before. You should actually have built a portfolio that you can sustain through the ups and downs of the markets. And so, and you should sleep at night, even if there <laughs> is some ups and downs. So you've, it means you've taken the right level of risk. You haven't taken too much risk. The worst you can do is that you take too much risk, and then 
there is too much volatility, you don't sleep at night, and you end up selling at the worst possible time. Right? Impatient. That, that, exactly. You be impatient, you lose your, uh, you know, you lose your sight Log of your, yeah. your long-term goal, and you end up selling when you should not be selling. You know, actually, the last two years have been a great example of why it's important to A, diversify, and B, invest over time. Let me give you a couple of examples. So 2022 has been a horrible year for most market, most asset classes. And so a lot of people have become very uh, skeptical and, and, and kind of uh, put money in their bank account instead of continuing to invest. And what we've been telling our clients is you should keep investing. And if you look back, people that kept investing over 2022 and invested in January and in February and in March and in April, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, now they sit on very nice gains because the market, yes, went down in 2022 and then picked up again. And so they bought stocks and bonds at their lowest value, and now they're actually seeing this value increase. So that's one example. So continue investing, and actually this has been very clear over the last, over the last couple of years. Uh, sim similarly, nobody expected 2023 to be positive for markets. And so far, while it has been quite volatile, equity markets globally have actually done quite well. The S&P 500 is up more than 10% year to date. But if you spoke to anyone during Christmas last year, Everybody expected terrible markets. And so if you actually trusted that logic and you stayed out of the markets, you have actually lost a significant rally in the market. So again, what is the right strategy? Trying to predict the future and be right? No, because you cannot be always, you're, not, you're never gonna be always right. The right strategy is continue investing and diversify. The equity markets this year have been driven by seven stocks. If you are picking stocks, if you, and I understand the thrill, the fun of kind of a, trying to get it right. But if you pick stocks, how many times can you get it right? Maybe this year you've been extremely good or lucky and you, you, know, you, you made a big bet on Nvidia. Kudos to you, you've done extremely well. Will you be able to do the same next year? Will you get again the, the, the right one? Probably not. You know, 92% of professional investors actually underperform the index. These are professional investors. The job is to pick stocks. How can a non-professional investor do better than that. And so that's why you need to diversify. You need to buy the indexes. That's what we, uh, you know, we believe in. And that's why we use ETFs as the main uh, kind of a legal bricks, if mm -hmm. you will, of the asset allocation of uh, construction. Definitely strong mindset as well and also continue investing. All right, hold that thought, Michele. We'll take a short break for now, but coming up next, we'll continue our discussions on the robot devices as well as the industry's outlook. So don't go away. Welcome back to All About Money on HKIBC. I'm Chloe Feng. Joining us today is Mr. Michele Ferrario, the founder of robot advisor firm Stash Away, and we're discussing the robot advisor's potential in Hong Kong. So earlier we have talked about, for example, the economic outlook in, uh, in Hong Kong and in the global markets as well, as well as how exactly does robot advisor work. But now I also want to get your thought because actually I know that your service is actually competing with those banks. Now we are at a time when the banks are offering quite attractive deposit interest rates. So are, how, how are you going to compete with them or like attract those investors to continue investing at a time when the market is so volatile? So there is two things that we do really. One is, as I mentioned earlier, we actually have two suites of products. One is the long-term portfolios that you know, enable you to build wealth over the long term. But the second one is a cash offering. And you know, our US dollar cash offering, which is you know, uh, in Hong Kong is uh, is a good way to uh, uh, invest your money, actually currently yields 5.4%. So it's actually above what you can get uh, at any bank. And it's very straightforward to do it. It's very liquid. It's uh, extremely safe because you're investing in very short-term treasuries. So it's as good as it gets from a cash management perspective. So we are quite competitive in terms of attracting cash. At the same time, though, we encourage clients not to think only short-term because if you are trapped into the mentality of just you know, leveraging your incredibly high right now cash yields in the short term, at a certain point, those cash yields will go down. And if you haven't, in the meantime, built your longer term portfolios, your portfolios of equities and bonds and real estate uh, and gold, you actually might have missed the boat. And so that's why it's important to keep investing irrespective of where the markets are and irrespective of where the cash yields are. Of course, you know, it, it does look 
incredibly good right now to invest, you know, get 5.4% no risk. Uh, but at the same time, you need to remember that this is short term. It might last for some time, but we don't know how long it's going to last. And so it's important that uh, you actually build something that over time will give you six, seven, eight percent, but for the next 20 years, not for the next six to 12 months. All right. Uh, in other interviews, you mentioned about how Singaporeans now actually prefer those kind of like cash deposits as well, those kind of like strategy. But what about the investment preferences in Hong Kong? What do you think? Is there any data about Hong Kongers' preferences for now? No, it's similar across most Asian markets, including Hong Kong. When you look at, you take a picture of people's financial assets. So, you know, you took a, a picture of people's wealth. Uh, more than 40% of people's financial assets are in cash. And this was true even two years ago mm -hmm. when interest rates were zero. So this is not driven by today's environment. This has always been true. And this to me is one extra sign of the fact that the financial services industry has done a terrible job at helping people get their money work for them. Because, you know, you keep it in, in cash. Again, two years ago, it was given 0%. It's not going to help you retire. It's not going to help you send your kids to the school you want to send them to. It's not going to help you buy the, the, the apartment you want to buy over, over time. And so it's important that uh, there is a narrative on you know, kind of a taking more of your savings, more of your cash, and placing it to build your wealth and build what I call financial peace of mind, making sure that when you are you know, kind of in a, you know, later in life, you actually can relax. You know that you have put aside enough money to, uh, to live uh, happily without too many financial concerns. To meet your financial goals as well. Yes. I know that uh, actually many investors may consider about the safety issues for such services as well. We want to know how much of a degree can a robot like uh, work in your platform like, uh, and how much humans involvement are there in your platform services as well. And what if, for example, something goes wrong, for example, the system got hacked, then w where the money will go then? Yeah. So look, there are kind of a several parts when you think about safety of an investment proposition. The first part, let's start from the basic, is where does the money go and what can happen to it? And uh, we are licensed in five markets, including Hong Kong. So in, in Hong Kong, we have a type one, type four, and type nine licenses, which means that we uh, we follow the rule, the local rules established by the SFC, which one of the rules is that all of the money that our clients invest with us is never with, with us. So we use custodian accounts. As every, every fund manager does it. So this is not a statutory specific topic. It's the fund management regulation in Hong Kong as well as everywhere else uh, in the world. What that means is that you're never really taking a statutory risk. So, you know, if anything were to happen to stash away, your money will be safe because your money is actually custodized at CT and HSBC. So it's completely safe in custodian accounts that are separated from our account. So that's, to me, you know, first and foremost. And I think the, uh, the fact that we're regulated is very important. You know, you know, I always recommend people to make sure that the platform you use are regulated by your local regulator because obviously there is a level of scrutiny that otherwise you would not have. So that's the first piece. Then you talked about... Uh, how are investment uh, decisions made? How much is human versus technology and machine? So uh, as I briefly mentioned earlier, we have a set of products, but uh, our core, which is the economic regime asset allocation driven portfolios, or general investing, we call it, uh, is, a, uh, is a set of portfolios where the asset allocation is adapted over time through a systematic view. So it's, uh, you know, it's a system. It's not a black box. It's not an artificial intelligence software that nobody understands. This is something that if you give me enough time, I can actually explain to you in quite some detail how it works. Because it's a long-term investment uh, logic, it's not a trying to time the market and invest today and sell tomorrow, you do not need complicated technology to do it. You need solid logic. Uh, there is a human layer on top, mm. which we have an investment team whose job is to continue improving uh, the systematic framework, and we have an investment committee whose job is to review the things that are done properly and approve anything that comes out of the, uh, of the algorithm. So, you know, in the last six years since we launched uh, in Singapore, we've done six changes to the asset allocation. So it's not once a week. It's actually, you know, it, it happens on average once a year as macroeconomic conditions change slowly. And those are all decisions that are proposed by the algorithm and approved by the investment committee. Uh, the, uh, the, the, third, the third aspect of, uh, of safety is, you know, you talk about um, uh, kind of cybersecurity. Uh, and as a tech platform that has been built recently, you know, we are only seven years old as a company, 
uh, obviously we've used the latest technologies and uh, and therefore uh, I would actually you know it's an advantage versus maybe the more traditional firms that have built that have been built with uh, technologies of the last you know 10 to 20 years ago and so we've actually been extremely uh, extremely solid we never had an incident we are also part of the regulation across all the markets where we're uh, licensed it's five of them actually looks at our tech infrastructure so cybersecurity is actually a big point the regulators check for and audit once in a while Right, and especially now in Hong Kong, we have encountered several hacking cases, which is quite concerning as well. And speaking of, for example, the generative AI's um, development in this industry as well, I know that your platform will ultimately you know, have some AI elements in the services as well. How will AI, the generative AI, also affect your position in the future? Would you worry that such technology can you know, replace your role as a financial advisor? You know, I think that technology and the development of technology gives everyone opportunities to improve their services to clients. So I, I'm never worried, I'm always excited about new developments and things we can do. I mean, artificial intelligence development have been around for quite some time. You know, over the last 12 months, it became prime time because of the success of, you know, ChatGPT and uh, equivalent platforms or generative AI, but artificial intelligence as a technology has been developed over the course of many, many, many years. When you look at the investment side, the, investment, the decisions on the investment side, I do not believe that you want to have a black box. I do not believe that, at least in the short term, we will see artificial intelligence take over. I believe in system, systematic approach. I believe in using numbers and data to make decisions, mm -hmm. and, and therefore, you know, algorithm rather than human biases. But I don't believe in making it a black box. You want to be, have something that actually is explainable, is understandable, and you can audit and monitor. So that's on the investment side. We do use artificial intelligence in the back end to solve some kind of complex mathematical problems, but you know, we've been doing it for you know, since six years ago, so forever. On the generative AI front, which is what kind of everybody experienced over the last 12 months, kind of testing ChatGPT and the likes, uh, I think there are several areas that could potentially have an impact on, uh, on the way we do things. Uh, one is in, as an interface to clients, you know, uh, and this I think is very early to see. So we're gonna, you know, start to run experiments and start asking clients kind of how they wanna interact with our platform, but you could uh, foresee in certain parts of the interface with clients, a more conversational type of interface that, you know, leverages uh, generative AI to have, a, instead of having a kind of a tree logic, having more of a conversational uh, logic. That's possible. I do not know, to be honest, if that's gonna be preferred by clients or not. I think this is something that has not been tested yet. And I think a lot of companies globally are testing and kind of running it with clients and see how it happens. I think the most immediate impact of generative AI is actually things you don't see. So it's how we work on a daily basis. And so internally as a company, we spend quite a bit of time thinking about how each of us can be more efficient, more productive, more precise, uh, or simply increase the quality of our work by leveraging some of the new technologies that have been actually kind of a, a coming out over the last 12 months. You know, and this is, is true for engineers. You, know, you have the co-pilots for engineers. It's true for marketeers. It's true for content producers. It's true for, you know, even, even for compliance, you know, looking at uh, you know, analyzing text and, uh, and legislation faster. Our job is to make sure that we understand what's relevant, what's not relevant, uh, what's ready, what's not ready, and continue to test and understand, you know, what can help improve clients' uh, experiences. Hmm. Now, I know that while this industry has been rather popular, for example, in the U.S. markets, it's still quite new in the Asian markets. How would you encourage those people who are still having sort of like a technology phobia to adopt such robot devices, like in Hong Kong, for example? I think that more than technology phobia, it's, uh, I think the barrier to using a platform like StashAway is, uh, it comes from maybe a couple of areas. One is, uh, people being comfortable with kind of a, with the current situation and with the banks and maybe not have enough understanding of what they are buying with the banks when, you know, why they're paying certain fees. You know, unfortunately, it's a very intransparent industry uh, historically. And so there is a lot of education that we spend time on uh, because we believe that the more people understand the, core, the basic of investments, the more people will gravitate towards solutions like us. All right, thank you very much for your insight. That's Mr. Michele Ferrario, the founder of robot advisor firm Stash Away. And thank you for watching All About Money. We'll be back next Sunday night. So until the next time, see you then.